Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rare here. I am back, finally, once more with my good brother, Gordon Ramsey Gaming. We're going to be doing a nice little duo spectate cast for all mid. A little bit of an audition reel, if you will. And hopefully going to have some great action this game with some very interesting picks. And I'll leave it to my brother to break it all down for you. All right, so starting off with the blue team here, we have a couple of interesting picks actually on both sides, so I'm pretty excited for that. But we do have a Kazadin up in the top lane, and I'm so excited to see Kazadin again. It's been quite a while since I've seen that champion in play, and he's actually in the solo top lane rather than mid, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes. And then blue team also has a Trundle in the jungle, a Ziggs in the mid lane, and a Lucian Brom bot lane combo. And on the opposite side of the map for the purple team, we have a Nautilus in the top lane, followed by a Graves in the jungle, a Aurelian Soul in the mid lane, a very interesting champion to me. And then rounding that composition off is a Tristana and Morgana in the bot lane. And with all these champions in the game, it's gonna be an explosive one. And there's plenty of puns there. You got Tristana and Ziggs in the game, but I just meant that because well it's probably done. It's gonna be a bloodbath. There is a lot of damage in this game, so I'm excited to see how this will pan out. That was that was near freak level. I'm gonna give it to you. That was good. Oh. Man, would we do a cast together? It is just tons of damage. But we're not gonna say Trist we're not gonna see a Trinity oh. Force this game, I don't think. But it did get buffed, but I don't think or I guess it's getting buffed, I think, in the next patch. But regardless of that, there's gonna be many, many puns to come. But level one start, nothing, no cheese, no nada. Just a little bit of leeching for both sides of the map here for their junglers and little action so far. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to watch mid just because Aurelian Soul versus Ziggs. It's not, I mean, it is explosive, but it's also not explosive. It's a lot of back and forth poke. It really comes down to positioning and uh, good use of combos there. So I'm excited to see how that's going to play out. I think jungler influence is going to be really big in mid lane, more so than top this game. So hopefully we'll get some early ganks there. Yeah, I agree with you there. And it's interesting. Neither jungler actually provides any CC. There's some slows on them and some disorient with the blind on Graves, but both of them can bring a lot of damage. So look for the solo laners to provide the CC and then the junglers to just come in and finish off the kill with a bunch of damage. So if the jungler is not there, I don't see too much kill potential, just a lot of back and forth like you said. So I'm putting my money on the junglers to impact this game. For sure. So do you think there's any champion select advantages one way or the other right now or pretty even back and forth? How do you look at it? So just looking at blue team's team, Blue team, team. Uh, that's an interesting way to uh, say it, I got uh, you, it's all good. That is an insane mobility comp they're running here. They have Kazdan, you have Lucian. Oh, have nice anchor on the top lane with a flash from Graves. Oh, this is the first blood. Oh, nice. Final shot from double buff Graves. And I was just about to say that they have a crazy mobile team once they get their mobility abilities here. Kazdan, level 6, gets his rift walk. He's good to go, but... In top lane, until you get the ultimate, that is a long lane and you're very prone to getting ganked and red team capitalized on that very early on, picking up that first blood and we'll see if, if this Nautilus gets too tanky. I'm already afraid for this Kazdan to do anything in that top lane. He might just get camped. Speaking of which, and a camp, we have one going right now, oh. kind of hoping this develops into something here. The regank. this is the dirtiest thing to do in Silicon, even in competitive sometimes. You kill the laner and then you give them the image in their brain that they're safe, you just teleport back to land, you want to get all that CS, and you just sit in that bush, which they're doing right now, waiting so very patiently. Oh, you jinxed it. Cast a curse. Cast a curse, but they're going for it anyway. Deep under tower, three shots on Nautilus. He will walk away, but man, that's like a minute wasted in jungle. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Kazan in there. He played it patiently. He knew what was going on. Something fishy, and there's no fizz in this game. Let me tell you though, if that works, it, I just want to alt F4 if I'm playing top lane. I'm just like, get me out of this game, dude. You just wasted your teleport to get that minion wave, and then you lose it all. But like you said, Kazdan, he, he's been around the block a few times. He's been cheesed a little bit. Ooh, teleport coming in top though. We might see some decent damage on the Graves. Uh, nice. Ooh, forcing the flash under the turn. Oh, a hook through a minion! Excellent play from Nautilus and Graves combo there. I didn't think that was going to land. Oh, bot lane though, some action here. Nice piercing light by Lucian, connecting onto both Tristana and Morgana. Some summoner spells exchanged, but definitely in favor, 
in my opinion, for the blue side here. All right, well, some low health bars. What summoners do we have left? We still have Ignite Just on Morgana. Start, I guess, yeah, never mind, so... It was looking good for Blue, and I actually took a double take, and it's just flash left for the Lucian, so they might actually be in a little bit of trouble here, looking at the health bars of Red team here. It'll be interesting to see how long Red delays a secondary aggression with that Ignite, knowing that they could just go straight on the Lucian there. I I'm imagining they might maybe force it, go back uh -oh. and buy. Oh, nice bind from Morgana, but meanwhile, up in top lane, Graves is currently engaging on the Kazan. Uh -oh. Right under tower, Nautilus is taking the shot. Oh, this is so dirty. Oh, he actually dodged the buckshot. Oh, the hero. I'm gonna give it to Kaz, and that was amazing. He actually dodged it. Braum will go down to ignite. Oh, the rocket jump fail from Tristana. Oh, goodness, no, that's so embarrassing. And an execute onto the Nautilus. Nautilus executed. There's just, <laughs> I wasn't lying to you, man. This is a bloody game already. Seven kills at six minutes into the game, but. The top lane idea, it was really good in theory, but Kazadin outplayed Graves so hard there because he line of sighted him on the turret and Graves can't auto attack through the turret the way his new auto attacks work. It mm -hmm. automatically just hits the closest target. So he actually autoed the turret twice, even though he was trying to obviously kill the Kazadin. Ooh, a fight in the mid lane. Exhaust goes down. Oh, it's going to be close there. Pops the barrier. He should be okay here. Oh, wow. Oh, Got him. Thunderlord's auto picking up the kill there. OP, man, that is insane. Lucian oh, in the bot lane. Staying. But then anyway, he's got champion mastery. He, You know what? He's going to be fine, guys. He's going to be oh, fine. Man, he just wanted to get it to that turret. Deny her the wave, and she gets the wave and a kill there. That is absolute worst case scenario there for him. I mean, they do have an even score, and he does have a CS lead, but it could have been so much more for him there had he not been that greedy. So still gives red team that slight advantage they have just under a thousand gold advantage already nothing too crazy but that is still a pretty nice advantage for seven minutes into the game here yeah for sure it's interesting you mentioned playing greedy we have this nautilus who's just constantly camping this chasm under tower even solo without the graves pressure whereas in bot lane despite having a little bit of a deficit strictly from you know a two on two blue's still playing really aggressive there he might be down in summoners but you know shoving lanes out solo he does have seven cs that's semi negligible but we do have trundle coming down here for a possible gank on tristana and do flash out to provide some safety for her there. So flash down on Tristana. She still has her W though, so still relatively safe. But I like you mentioned, Nautilus just constantly shutting top. Like Kazin's done a great job in keeping his CS advantage over Nautilus, mm -hmm. which Kazin normally can struggle pretty hard early on, and especially with getting camped by the Graves. The fact that he has a 13 CS lead advantage right now is really worrisome for Red Team, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of kill kill pressure on him without the Graves, who is now currently on bot side trying to steal this red, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. So he should be safe to farm. And honestly, it's not like a Nautilus is going to scale to be a big threat in the late game. I would know. I've tried that many a time. It doesn't work that hot. Meanwhile, some action in the mid lane. A nice wombo combo from the early and so on to Ziggs. He will walk out with a bit of a health advantage there. Braum almost, ooh, ooh, man, I was scared for his life right there, going face in that brush with no vision. All right, so we do see it is a Cloud Drake for the first dragon spawn here, so gonna get that out of combat mobility to whichever team decides to go for it. Arguably the, the least strong dragon, not a lot of people are fans of it, but at some point you are gonna have to kill it to allow yourself a chance at potentially a stronger dragon. So we'll see which team opts for that. It'll probably just be after a fight. I don't think any of them will start it off with five people being on the map alive. So look for a potential TP play for both sides in the bot lane, bringing their top laners down and locking them down. Because both bot lanes have quite a decent amount of CC that they could provide with the Braum, with the Morgana. So if any one of those extend, I would expect a flank TP and then probably rotate the dragon. But they're just fighting two CC regardless here. Yeah, nice Braum play there, blocking most and of the damage. There There's is. a teleport, you called it. Oh, nice bind, oh. yeah. This, this could be, be two. Yep. An aggressive That's rocket crazy. jump. I mean, oh, Hanzo has flash. He will get out of tower range just in time. I was going to give Braum credit for... I mean, it was a late ult, but he didn't have much choice. Yeah. At least he went for it. Meanwhile, mid lane. Oh, the Aurelian Soul kind of self-jukes. He might be able to get a star kill. Nope. Oh, the oh. so close. 
That was crazy close. Tremble's not gonna be able to get a. Oh, he's dead. aggressive flash into an exhaust. Can now spray five up? No, he's gonna go down to the Trundle. Nice play. I thought that was an amazing bait, but Trundle still just had enough damage to finish him off there. So, if there's action in the bot lane, Midland's like, you know what? You don't get all the fun. We're fighting too. Pull both the junglers, and Blue actually prevails here in that one for O exchange. And all this time, Kazanin just sat top lane, pushing that wave, farming up. And yeah, I mean, there's next to nothing this Nautilus can do to him. Yeah, really, he's, he's got his Rift Walk now. He's gonna have a decent mana pool with that catalyst, and he might go for a tier as well, go double dip into the mana items. So, I guess Nautilus at this point is just you know, I'm gonna TP bot lane every time it's up and impact the map that way because I can't lock this guy down anymore, even though we still support Morgana roaming top to try and do just that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the kind of thing where Red really doesn't have anyone that is in a really strong early aggressor besides arguably Graves in the jungle. So why not a double dip? Why not go for a really strong scaling comp on this Kazadin, especially against Aurelian Soul? Yeah, I would definitely see him. I, I don't think he will now just because it's at this point in the game. Right oh, now. here comes that Morg. First. What? Morgana's sticking around, picking up that third dive, and falling action. Oh, the flash into an ultimate. Braum will put up a shield, but can they stop the Tristana here? I'm not sure. Braum's pretty low. Oh, oh, nice juke. There's the heal. Ooh. Oh, wow. That was close Great on ult. so many levels. Great ult. Ooh, he's just going to flash right over. Hey, there. that works. Picks up the kill. Zig's roaming down, though. He has no flash, no dash. This could be it. He's done. Uh, can he kill Brahma? Nope. Never mind. Thunderlords will make that go a bye bye. Not enough mana there, so overstepping just a little bit actually advantageous for the blue side here again. Just ever so slightly bringing back that gold lead. Just a thousand gold lead again. Ooh, look for a trundle pillar. There it is. Ken House Party 5v5. Oh, he's forced to flash, but Brom Q might be enough here. Actually, she's just straight up oh. ult it. Nice Morgana shield. Oh, but Kazan mobility picking up the kill there, so blue team. Fighting their way back into this game. Kazan's got his Rod of Ages. He's scaling. Ziggs, I mean, he's going to be a late game threat too at some point. So. Ooh, Braum really low here. Going to have to be careful. Walk away before that Trasana returns. Nice ultimate onto the Ziggs. Oh, sick hook into it. Also, Black should prevent any sort of counterattack. She gets the reset on Trasana. Oh, goodness. No, the fail cascade. Oh, support life. Oh, that hurts. I wonder if Trundle could have intercepted the hook from Nautilus to potentially save the Ziggs, but then maybe he would have just put himself at risk of getting locked down and dying as well. So, if he, maybe he could have, you know, played the Titanic music and saved his friend, but he will allow him to actually go down. Red Team picks up that first dragon, and I will go ahead and take a peek at what the next one is. It is Trundle and Kazan getting aggressive on this mid lane right now, though we might see Nautilus go down here. He does not have flash available. Good binding. But can Kazan solo kill? Oh, the, oh, the whiff! Black Shield to give him a couple seconds. Oh, he just burns right through it. He doesn't even care. He's gonna get Q off cold. Oh, nope, he will take care of it. He should be able to get out of this with the riff. Oh, wow. I like that, Morgana. She might not even get this, but... I, oh, we didn't pursue it. I mean, she didn't get it. Aurelian Soul might hear just off the tail end. Can, oh, no! Oh! Hero Morgana bind as well. Okay, so that... It worked in the end. I'm going to give points to Morgana for an aggressive flash pay to cut off a form of escape, buying time for Aurelian Soul to come in on a flank. That was nice. I did like that. Both top players, man. Back-to-back fail reels. Ooh, Tristana getting aggressive on the zigs in mid. I don't think she's going to have to get kill here, but she might be able to steal that chicken. And like I was trying to say before that, it actually is back-to-back -back air or cloud drake spawns here, so maybe red team picks up a Aurelian soul. Oh, so close. Barely, barely. But blue team's going to get the spots hurt while all Ooh, he's dead. Oh, and she throws in the auto attack with the flash. Wow. Excellent play by Tristana there, but Lucian's gonna get away here unless Morgana has anything to say about it. I think he's out. Yep. He's yeah, out. he's out clean. I, I can't blame Tristana for ulting there. She didn't want to die, and it's just unfortunate that he barely walks that off. But uh, well played Tristana getting that flash auto attacked off on the prom. Accidentally took Tur Dagger somehow and died for it. So unlucky there. 8 to 14 is the overall score though, and just shy of a 2,000 gold advantage. So red. Now increasing their advantage over the last couple of minutes here, and they're going to even out that turret disadvantage in the bot lane for one of their own, thus more increasing that gold lead that they have top lane. 
We should be able to see. Oh, nice pillar. Uh, okay, pillar actually. Not only is actually bluffing the faint here, waiting for graves to come in. I don't think they have enough damage to kill Trundle though. Trundle's in. He doesn't have much. Kazan getting low. Graves. This is gonna be really close to Relian Soul sweeping in as well. I think he's getting a cleanup crew here. Yep, there goes those start. Okay, so we have a flash from the Trundle. Can he get another Relian Soul? Oh, no, wrong way, bud. Yeah, no. That was, that was a brilliant Q. Either way, if he misses the Q, it forces him back into the lane. Speaking of being forced, forward. Morgana fighting the Dressada Braum right now. Forced to shield herself. We have an aggressive exhaust coming in on the Ziggs. Can he get one more attack? Okay, there's the double stun. Nice pickup. Will it continue from the Relian Soul sweeping around the Ziggs, though? The stars are out. Can he get on top of the Ziggs? Yeah, yes, yeah. he can! Aurelian Soul's ult is almost up. They might look to dive, but it looks like they are just going to peel back and go potentially for that top turret here. So just look at the action of this game. 26 minutes. Or I know, right? Minutes, 16 minutes in. This is this is what you like to see as a caster. In the game. I mean, I was just thinking to myself, man, this is the first one we're doing tonight, and we got a great game on our hands. It's good back and forth, nice and bloody. Uh, a joy to be back casting this kind of game. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some gold concentrations for both teams here. Blue team, they actually have a very nice spread of gold here uh, as far as their kill goes. Every lane besides the support has a couple kills, but then on the red side, you have both your 80 carries in your comps with five kills. Well, Ooh, Trisana jumping trundle, on top though. of this trundle. Nice pillar, but Morgana's got the flank. Gravesault kind of whiffs, but Trisana should be able to pick that up. Yep. yep. Meanwhile, up in top lane, surprisingly, the Nautilus is actually forcing the Kazan on the retreat here. Let's see. How's his CS in comparison? And he's still got a small lead, but nothing fantastic. Braum, little caught out here. He should be able to walk away. Yep, nice W onto the Ziggs there. So, another kill going over to Tristana. Both their AD carries rocking 6 and 5 kills, so they're very threatening in this double AD carry comp. And you have a lot of heal for them. You have Nautilus, you have Morgana, and even Aurelian Soul can heal very well. So, it's going to be pretty hard for a blue team to come back into this game and really lock down those, or Tristana even being a long range AD carry. And then Graves with his true kit. He's gonna be super. Oh, uh, rip Kazan. you, Kazadin. Nice flash and hook. Oh, oh, oh! I thought he was gonna be an escape artist there, but that last out attack, like I was saying, that long range. Aurelian oh, Soul man. forced the tank tower. Good Trundle Pillar will also force the flash as well. They are re aggressing over with an Kazan. aggressive Nautilus hook. The Ziggs Bomb. Should live with that. Oh, yes. So, Trundle Ooh! Aurelian Soul. Will go down. Ziggs a little out of position. He's just going to straight go for the Graves, not even worry about the Morgana. Oh, a Trundle Pillar into the... Oh, so close on the Ziggs bomb as well. His ult is obviously on cooldown. That water balloon is not close enough, my friend, and I think uh -oh. you might have just killed yourself. Uh-oh, the Goomba stops are coming. Oh, she doesn't go for it. I thought she... Ooh, Meanwhile, she suddenly Kazadin... Oh, he's going to get that Rift Walk. That, this is how long the fights are, man. This guy died to start the fight had enough time to resurrect and teleport and finish the fight. This is just non-stop fighting solo queue and I absolutely love it and I think my cat is snoring in the background. So I now I, good deal with that. First of all, if it is Orca, Orca, I love you. We're trying to cast, but I can't even hear. And that was a crazy fight. I mean, let's just break that down. Of You had Red diving on secondary top tower. Yeah to get the original Kazan to kill, disengaging, then all of a sudden, hey, let's re-engage, why not? Straight back into tower aggro, really, and so after having tanked three tower shots, sticks around for additional CC, suddenly Tristana over the wall for two additional kills, and then we have the regression from the dead Kazan, as you mentioned, via teleport. I love this game. Hmm. Each team is just trying to one-up each other, like, oh, you're gonna stay an extra five seconds fight? I'll stay an extra ten seconds fight. Oh, you're staying ten? I'll stay fifteen. And then we get, like, these three-minute fights that just never end, but we might see another one of those fights at the second cloud rank here, started by the red team here. It actually does go down, though. Good so, try from Ziggs to pick it up, but no dice there, unfortunately. Double red drake, and I was speaking how blue team has a lot of mobility. Now that provides more mobility for red side. So if they have all this mobility and all of this damage as well, gonna be scary for blue team. This fight top lane. Though. I know it's been going on for like the past minute as we've been casting, and no kills yet. But oh, oh, minions. oh, oh. minions and red buff and the swagger time. All right, Hanzo. I really like that play by Nautilus. Waited till Kazan had to commit a hundred percent till death kind of Mortal Kombat. 
and that's when he pops his alt down. She sees him in the minions, and I guarantee you, the, if the minions weren't there, he probably would have lost that. So just really quick split second decision by the analysis there, and they barely pick up that rift hill buff for Tristana right before it was about to despawn. So she's gonna have that reduced damage in solo 1v1s, as well as just that extra damage that stacks up kind of like an old what would be static shift almost. So mm -hmm. gonna give her just a little bit more burst as well as some solo potential, even though I don't think she should be soloing, but that last 20 minutes, smart play to just pick it up right before it despawns there. I really like that. Yeah, we're not seeing either team really go for too much vision in the Baron area. Obviously, it did just spawn, so no one's really feeling too frisky on that front. A lot of wards still around the Dragon area from that previous Wayne Drake pickup, as you'd mentioned. Uh, I'm surprised we really don't see too many more deep wards. I mean, red does have one on either side, but really nothing too much past that. And I'm, given just how bloody this game's been, you'd think they'd want to have a little more vision just to be able to track movement and go for another play. I was gonna say, that's probably why they don't have vision, because they're just constantly fighting and never setting I up. I mean, hey, that's control. true. So, that might be why Kazan is just openly rift walking on this Nautilus all game long. I mean, he's fighting in a creep wave against the Nautilus, yeah. who has Sunfire Cape. He doesn't care whatsoever about his surroundings, it seems. Alright, so third dragon of the game is going to be an Ocean Dragon here, so a lot of potential region coming out, but that is a long ways away. Right now it is barren for our neutral objective. But looking at some builds here, Ziggs is all out. Ooh, Botlin again. Wow, Aurelian. he went for that blind. Aurelian Soul, ooh, nice flash. Let's get him out of there. So two alts down for a flash. I'd say worth for Kazadin. I mean, we will see that tower take some pretty decent damage from Nautilus and Rolling Soul combined. Tristana is keeping them busy at mid with Morgana. So this is a good shot from Red. Oh, Morgana, speaking of which, a little bit late on the spell shield there. So she has slowed for too long. Forced to flash. But Tristana also on the flank with no front line. Ooh, this get locked down. Locked down, and she gets her jump back by propping that bomb there. Very lucky, I was gonna say. Oh, but Trundle's still going in anyway. Oh, this is so close. I want to watch both sides of the fight. Okay, so there's one down. Morgana will save her Tristana. Brom trying to defend the Lucian will get locked up. Ziggs and uh, Kazan a little late to the party there. I'm surprised, especially with Kazan having teleport off cooldown. He had a ward right there on the side of the lane, chose not to go in. And it looks like Red Team will opt for this dr or Baron, sorry, not a dragon. That is dead. And this is a little bit risky. A lot of AoE damage potential, and I don't think they wanted to start it, but maybe Aurelian Soul's W forced them to start it here. They're super low against this. Yeah, they have to back Yeah. I mean, Zigzal is off, or is on cooldown, so he can't just chuck it in for a YOLO steal, but uh -oh. honestly, just via health bars, I think they should walk away. I don't even think they should be taking this fight. This is risky. Aurelian Soul forced to flash away. Mike at the stars! Yeah. The zone is well played. He should die here, though. One for one overall. Oh, is it gonna be any more of the Ziggs? Uh-oh. Nice locket that will keep Graves alive at least. Morgana forced the spell shield herself that will just get the Q off cooldown in time for some damage. Uh -oh. Just throw it out! Hero! The barrier! Oh, that oh, mastery man. though. This could be barren now for Bluetooth out of nowhere. I don't know if they should go for it, but... Uh, I mean, Ooh. Tristana and... Nautilus both have alts off cooldown. I think they might be able to two man defend this if they really it's want to. Not oh, okay, so Nautilus is tanky, but Trundle steals most of the stats. Lucian trying to put down some damage. Brom really low against that Tristana, forced to back out. It's now 2v2. Oh, Lucian forced to blow the flash. Tristana goes for an aggressive rocket jump. Two more alts. Okay, so she will get the auto attacks off on Lucian. Can she take down the Trundle? I don't think so. So they will delay the Baron at least. Yes. So they did save the throw, the big worm, big purple worm of, you know, Solo Q nightmares throwing so many games there. Both teams trying to do a little bit of throwing there, actually. But uh, I was going to try and say a couple minutes back, the Ziggs is just all out on offense. He went second out of death cap. He's just going straight up for the long range poke dunks on some kids. So if he gets caught really early on, He's going to go down. He has mm -hmm. got zero resistances with this, but looks like he's going for Void Staff now as well. So look for Red Team to potentially try and make a pick on the Ziggs and then probably just snowball the fight from there, in my opinion. Yeah, I would fully agree with that. Aurelian Soul going for a much more bulky, healthy build with the Rylize. Uh, 
I mean, it's nice to have the Ziggs in the back line just throw out damage, but when you're against the likes of, you know, Graves, Nautilus, Morgana, and even Aurelia and Soul, there's so much either aggressive forward movement or lockdown in your position that you can't just sit in the back. And we're gonna have a big fight here in the mid lane. Will we see Graves pull away with that locket health just barely? Oh man, some slight de-aggression. I think we're waiting for cooldowns to come back up. Meanwhile, Aurelian Soul running through the melee and under the Zig solo. There goes that galaxy. Zig solo against Aurelian Soul. He will oh, just slightly not get it. Ever so close. If he had maybe just one more damage had him completed, he would have got it. But he just went on a solo mission, man. His team was in the river and he just wanted it. But the Death Brush is spotted by Blue Team Blind onto the Kaz and he will actually die to Tristano and not also give up his own life to defend Tristana. As long as she can just stay away from CC on this trundle, she should be okay. Lucian's too low to re-aggress. This could be a Drake for Red Team here. That Zigzalt though did a lot of damage. Got them in that choke point and hit all of them here. Are they still oh, gonna contest Oh, Trundle wants it. Okay, so they are just gonna walk away. Third dragon secured for a red team. When will it ever end? It's gonna be another water dragon. Back to back clouds and then back to back water. So we will see if we, if the game even goes on for this fourth dragon to spawn, but kind of a coincidental kind of Illuminati uh, dragon spawn here. <laughs> we don't even know what the third potential dragon will be because it just doesn't want to spawn it. So they're going to be just so mobile and so healthy with both these dragons in combination. So look for red team to probably group up, start knocking down these turrets and just out rotate the blue team because they're going to be so fast and they'll practically never have to back with the region that they're having. Mm -hmm. So looking super super grim for blue team to come back in this game but it is possible it is in a solo queue after all anything can happen uh, yeah <laughs> that's basically a perfect way to describe this game i feel like one of the major problems that blue team has right now is just that um you know you got trundle and you can steal Nautilus' stats which is great for that cooldown but as soon as that drops there is so much lockdown potential from red team that you just die immediately you might have maybe one chance at a de-aggression and a re-engage but then you're re-engaging against people who will have their cooldowns back up you're gonna have a hook you're gonna have morgana q there's no avenue in my opinion anyway for blue to really make an aggressive play here short of just someone catastrophically not positioning themselves on red team I was going to say, it's going to either be just a random pick that they get, or it's going to be over-aggression from the red side, which we have seen time and time again this game. Red team stepping up just a little bit too far and you're getting punished for it, so that is likely one of the two ways. Speaking of which, Morgana, back. too far out here, might get picked off. There you go. It and gets the flash out of her, so she's going to be not as useful in these next up-and-coming fights here. Zig's going to destroy turrets here with his new W pass as well. They're just diving here. Let's see how it plays out. Kazan enforced Hourglass himself. Nautilus oh, trying to tank up front, but Graves goes down immediately. We should see Braum live here just ever so slightly. A little bit of a late locket there, but hey, why not? Aurelian Soul thinking he can get a snipe, but he's the one getting sniped right now by this Lucian. Will pick up the kill. Secondary tower should go down here momentarily. The Hero Ziggs taking the tower. I can appreciate that. Maybe it's W was now, I just want to see the animation because Zig's W can actually kill turrets now when they're below 25% health, just straight up, straight up kills it. So I don't even know if he knows that. Maybe it was on cooldown, but well, I guess I jinxed it. Like you said, Caster's curse, man. This game is almost dead even now for no reason. Hey, I'm not complaining. That was a great fight. So we yeah. do see red ping straight onto Baron just given their somewhat lack of vision around the general area, but they also just happen to know that Blue really over-aggressed. Uh -oh. oh, Lucian practically killing himself with the Baron, getting really greedy for this purple ward kill. <laughs> I don't know if that's worth it. Oh, the teleport. Oh, oh forces the flash at the very... Oh, counter flash from this Nautilus. I appreciate the undersea aggression. Will we see him go down, however? Okay. Trasana comes in, Kassadin taking most of his health down all the way. Oh, they are lucky to have that secondary tower. That would have been real bloody real fast. Saving Private Lucian right there, barely escaping, and it looks like though with the damage they did to Lucian, Red Team might go straight for the Baron here, but again, this could be another throw. Morgana, Morgana, what are you doing? Oh no! Okay, so she at least didn't just reflex Black Shield. That's actually really important, because if she Black Shielded herself, that could be an immediate go sign for Blue Team that we just run in and try to pick off the Graves, maybe even Tristana if she, you know, had some poor positioning there. So, uh, Quick little 
you know, back off from red. They're going to go back, try to heal up real fast, but that gives blue team a chance to reestablish vision. Mm -hmm. So, TP up for Kasdan. It is down for Nautilus, so maybe we'll get him in the side lane. It does look like he's going towards bot lane to apply a little bit of map pressure. Nobody can really kill him 1v1, but I don't really think he could kill Nautilus as well. But if it does pull Nautilus bot lane, he could still go back, get those home guards, get that teleport flank in and potentially get an immediate pick on a high priority target, maybe a Soul Soul or Kusana. Look for him to do that. Speaking of picks Grace. in bot lane, Graze and Kazadin going at it right now. Oh, two more okay. autos. There's the, oh, oh, sick. Hourglass hover. Here comes Lucian's out of nowhere. Okay, so the trade one on one at the very least. Can the receive some aggression in mid lane? Hook onto the trundle. There's the ultimate from Nautilus found the back line of Ziggs. Forced to kind of just be out of the fight temporarily. Braum ult as well will eliminate the Morgana from the battlefield. The really soul throwing out some stars. But we will see a flash forward from the trundle. Wow! I don't think I agree with that life choice decision, but likewise, Aurelian Soldus continues to throw out stars. He's not even doing anything. He's just hovering, practically killing both. Just what is with Red Team and killing themselves? I, I, I don't even. Wow, that Lucian does so much damage with this build. I believe it's forty percent. Yeah, forty percent CDR. So he is going to be throwing out his spells left and right here, and Red Team just didn't respect it, and he. Just, barely gets out and he's gonna yeah Ziggs and Lucian are going to destroy turret here if they get this inhibitor game is oh I think they can here. Lucian might die for it but he's actually why are you hitting the inhibitor one okay fine I guess Kaz and then we'll just clean up on his own nope. maybe I oh no one okay search, one search from Mob Mortis is busted on Graves man you get that pop in Kaz and doesn't have enough straight up burst to kill you through it and he just life steals his way through but they do get the inhibitor still but maybe red team goes and forces i would force baron right here yeah you're, you're throwing the game a little bit you kind of need to get yourself a hold of the game again low health bars on two as well as lucian dead i would go for this Baron. i mean this is really important that morgana actually for once going solo is the right play forcing a stop on the back from the chasm and he does not have teleport so this is much easier for red to conceivably take baron his ult is up though, and that can do about as much, if even more damage than it's might. So we'll see. But Red getting get Baron low. Oh my! The Ziggs though. It's what okay. a hero! But Brahm is gonna go down one v five. Yeah, there's no way he's living through that. I, I mean, if Blue can disengage, that's worth. Yep. Both supports dead, and he stole the. Oh, he didn't have. I don't think Grace had smite up. His smite just came up on my end. Oh, good. Did he maybe just not smite? I'm gonna go back really quick and watch, but I don't think he had smite up when that Baron died. I'm gonna watch really quick. Oh, he did have smite up, so I guess he just didn't smite it. And oh, I'll, goodness, I'll no. I'll take the health again really quick. Ziggs, I'm not even kidding you, Ziggs ultimate did 1300 damage. What? I, I'm, maybe there's an auto attack thrown in there as well, but. I mean, he does have that build. I don't think it does that much. There, there had to have been another auto attack that just had at the same time, but. The fact that they got that Baron and it's Oh a, no, Kazadin forced a flash. Could this be a throw? Graves. Okay, never mind. They actually choose not to re-aggress. Trundle really aggressing on wolves? That's that's questionable. They don't have the deep enough vision to do that quite yet, but I guess Red Team's gonna respect the Baron and just back off. Graves will barely back out. That could have been bad. Man, both teams are on the sword's edge of just randomly throwing this game, which makes it so exciting to watch. All right, and can I ask what time exactly you are? It's in? cool. I got you three through three right now. Okay, All right. Let's go ahead and get back there. <laughs> All right. So Trundle currently fighting onto this graze one v one. Ryan Soul Stars not really doing anything. They will deaggress temporarily. Not too much actual pressure going in other lanes. I guess we're just gonna shove everyone in bot lane and hope for the best. There will go the Lucian ult to force off the red team from the tower, and they will pick it up rather easily with Zig's passive and uh, Lucian as well. They are gonna slowly push their way up bot lane yep. here. Minions making their way at mid, not quite. I mean, they're just gonna go for it. Who cares about towers? Oh my goodness, never mind, that tower doesn't exist anymore. If you zone off the wave clear and you have Baron on AP, you just 
or eliminate structures here, and a fight is erupting for this inhib here. Nice little Brahma will buy them some time. Lucian dumps ring damage in the back line, but is it enough because he lost his front line? Trundle at 10% HP. Graves doesn't have enough damage to kill him quite yet. Will try to go out on the Lucian, forced to back away, likely because of the Kazanin and the Ziggs as well. Oh man, it actually burns flash, but now the minions have finally made their way to mid to where they actually are causing Red Team to visibly back off from pursuing blue. So no damage on the actual Nexus Towers, but two inhibitors down. Uh, you know, you don't really have Baron to get your way back in. You're going to lose your blue buff here. I mean, I didn't think blue was going to swing back into this, I, but yep. this Lucian, man. It was just over aggression, and then that amazing Baron steal, this cherry on top for the blue team here. I'd be so upset, man. You have four dragons as a red team. You had, what, I think that's like 6,000. Over 6,000. In my opinion, the better team comp, and then you just fail like two, three fights in a row and then get a Baron stolen from you, and the game suddenly, now they're on the back foot and they're two mm -hmm. inhibitors down. The gold, at this point, almost negligible, that gold difference, but man, oh man, what a swing of things. This Ziggs, 10, 4, and 12. Lucian has 12 kills himself there. There's just a lot of big items completed for the carries. I mean, Kazadin hasn't even finished his build. That's what's scary, is there's yeah. going to be another threat as the longer this game goes. We will just see this top tower. There's nothing Red Team can do to stop this. Sick Brom Shield into an ult will completely counter Rillian Soul. Never mind, Rillian Soul doesn't exist anymore. It's over. I mean, two kills right off the bat here. How can you spend this? Gonna die. Flash forward from Trundle out of Dristana. She will go down to Lucian. Morgana forced to run away. The tower will go down. Lucian should be able to solo kill this Morgana. Maybe a hero binding just to buy time, though. Uh -oh. No. Okay. Yep. He's got it. Graves will come in. Oh, nice. He will get down a quick little kill. But is he? Ah, uh, no. There's, there's no, no way. He's dead. That's going to be. Oh, my goodness. What a turnaround by Bleepsy. That's going to seal the deal here. Ace for blue team, 36 to 36, even up the kill, and wow, oh wow, I mean, if you had to give an MVP for this game, who would you choose? Because in my opinion, it, it has to be the Ziggs, even though Lucian played so well, I mean, this guy just had huge offense in this game, stole the Baron. You know... Yeah. I'm gonna give it to the Kazadin actually. Lucian, okay. I think it was the flashiest for sure, Ziggs a close second, but the Kazadin had over 60 CS lead on Nautilus after being ganked immediately and That's over true. constantly by Graves. Comes back, keeps a CS lead, manages to make some really sick Zonia plays, always going at the very minimum one for one, sometimes two for one in, you know, fast little skirmishes. And even though he didn't have a full build, you could tell he was a threat, and you could tell Red Team had to respect when Kazadin, of all people, makes a rift walk flash forward onto a Tristan out of nowhere. I think he was one of the key turning points. He, Even if he ne didn't necessarily have the closer, I think he was the sort of motivation through a struggling mid-game that, hey, at least one of our lanes is ahead. One of our lanes can still pull us back into this. Okay, so I can agree with that, but wonderfully well played by the blue team in a very close comeback win in some good old NA solo queue games. And I, for one, enjoy this game. Hopefully we will have some more in the future. I don't know about you. Oh, we'll be back for sure. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. Peace out.